If you stay standing for the um, Seneca Intermediate Land Acknowledgement Statement, just as a reminder, um, at each one of our public meetings and athletic contests, we'll be reading um, either the adopted land acknowledgement statement by the school board or one of the versions that are um, adopted off of that or adapted off of the lengthier board one. Um, the one we're going to be reading tonight is for Seneca Intermediate School. Seneca Intermediate School acknowledges the homeland of the Anandawatka and the Ohio Territory on which Seneca Intermediate School now stands. We acknowledge that Seneca children were removed from their homes and sent to boarding schools on and off territory. Boarding schools attempted to take their language and culture from them. We send love and acknowledgement to the survivors that reside in our community today. We recognize that Seneca families were forcibly removed from their homes and pushed into Salamanca City Central School District when Kinjua Dam was constructed. We offer care and support for their children and grandchildren. We acknowledge that Salamanca City and Salamanca School District exist through the goodwill of the Seneca Nation and legally through a lease lasting more than 100 years. Salamanca Intermediate School strongly states our commitment to teaching the history, culture, and language of the Anandawakta. Seneca Intermediate School greatly values the diverse community members from all indigenous nations, their rights, their strength, their independence, their heritage, and their connection to this land. We stand with all indigenous peoples. While we cannot undo what has been done, it is the goal of Seneca Intermediate School to make improvements that will benefit the next seven generations of indigenous students. Thank you. Okay, have there been any changes to the agenda since this was pretty? Yes, um, actually, since last week, there are four changes, um, okay. one of which is a uh, CSU uh, unit, civil service unit, uh, an MOA regarding adding an 11 month family support worker has been added to the agenda. We removed the appointment of school monitor Shayla John. Uh, she declined the position. The open house dates of September 29th and October 13th have been added to the board information. Um, we also added a student that is traveling to the New York State School Music Association um, as an overnight trip. So that was added to the uh, overnight trips. And then I'm requesting that under uh, presentations, we add an update on safety. Okay. Um, that's not on the agenda, but I would like to have that added to the agenda, please. Okay. Okay, I need a motion to approve the amended agenda. Motion. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Same. Motion carried. Um, just to say, um, I'm I'm uh, in charge of running the meeting tonight. Um, I'm I'm Dale Coleman, the, the senior member here on the on the panel tonight. Um, I see Carrie John is on online. Um, Carrie, if you'd like to step in and, and run it, that's that's up to you. But but I'm more more than willing. Um, and also, Teresa Ray has been set time to see for for the evening, and Sue Freeze is on her way down. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm Fine with you running the meeting, Dale. Uh, I actually asked Mark to ask you about it. Uh, okay. I just don't know how well it'll work from the the Zoom option. So without being in the room, connectivity issues. I think it's just better if somebody in person runs it. Okay, sounds great. Thanks. Okay. Next on the agenda are recognitions and presentations. I'm going to ask Mr. Bartolodic, our athletic director, to give us an update on the summer athletic teams um, and how the fall season started. We do have just a, a sheet to kind of go over some of the numbers. I'm sorry, it's not a nice PowerPoint presentation form. Um, I want to thank you guys. Just thank you for the opportunity to present on the summer. It, it is our second year running our, our athletic camps, 
and along with uh, you know kind of reigniting our, our summer swim program. The uh, summer still skills camp started on July 11th, ran six consecutive weeks, Monday through Thursday, uh, from 12:30 to 2:30, not 2300. Yeah. The camps featured 10 sports this year. All the camps are run by our coaches and staff. Um, the goal of that is to provide instruction as well as supervision to just make sure we're, we're utilizing the different spaces on campus and doing it safely because um, there is a drop off and a pick off up component that we need to make sure we're working with Ray's team and our coaches to make sure all our kids are, are there and accounted for. Um, you'll see the breakdown participation by sport per day. Um, and we, we did add a couple, uh, a few new options this year. And in, in some of the instances, you might see some numbers that are higher and some numbers that are lower. And, and there's a number of factors for that. Sometimes other sports are in season during the summer. Um, so you already have you already have students who are participating in that sport and they're not as inclined to come participate in the same camp sport for that day. Um, but overall, our numbers improved from, from last year. And um, you know, that was a, that was great to see, it, as well as just adding a couple new opportunities for our kids. Our summer swim program is headed by Anna Gifford with a team of 10 Salamanca student lifeguards. Uh, that also started on 7-Eleven and ran two consecutive weeks or excuse me, two sets of three consecutive weeks. The goal there was to try to um, engage more students. Last year went six consecutive weeks straight and we had to, um, we weren't able to get all of the kids to commit to six weeks, but they were taking a space. Um, this time we went three, three weeks and three weeks and we actually improved significantly in terms of our numbers. We had 121 sign up, we serviced 91. Um, the lessons kept a guard, a one guard to five swimmer ratio with two guards on chairs focused on the water. Uh, the guards rotated every other class. We also offered a 12.30 to 2.30 Monday through Thursday for open swim that averaged roughly 14 to 15 and 10 guards throughout the summer. The, the fact that we're able to hire and keep 10 guards is uh, an acknowledgement. You know, it's just a, it's a uh, something I know other places we're struggling with. So I, we're proud of that and the support that we get from our administration and the board to accomplish that goal, um, I believe is starting to build because last year was such a struggle to get that summer swim program going. It was like, they're offering no lifeguard courses. The first eight CPRs were tough to come by. We got it in the nick of time. Now all those kids came back. We are consistent with our, um, our advisor, our, our supervisor, Ms. Ann Giffords on our second year. So all the routines and procedures have been established and um, we, we, we offer a chance for the, all the participants, participants to um, fill out a survey that we send through their email to get some feedback on how the program went. And um, the feedback has been you know, overwhelmingly positive. So we're proud of that. We thank you guys and um, board and administration for the support and hope to continue. Hope to continue. The only issue we get is that it's a little hot from 1230 to 230. But we uh, we want to match it in line with our summer programming educationally. So kids can go from morning work right to some afternoon athletics and some activity. So I, I think it fits pretty well. Okay. okay. Good. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. While you're, questions? There, yep. while you're up there, um, tonight we're appointing two individuals as mm -hmm. varsity club advisors. Mm -hmm. We've had something new. Could you just touch base on that a little bit? Varsity club is um, new, obviously. It is an opportunity for our student athletes uh, to, to have a voice in some decision making. We hosted a meeting to trouble or to, uh, to get some ideas from the student athletes. But nobody really knows what the expectations are as of yet. Um, I can I can put it out over social media and explain it and describe it to the students, but it really needs to be a student-run club where they are providing ideas and opportunities for um, sportsmanship, camaraderie. Um, camaraderie. Did I say that right? You can't nail that. Um, and the varsity club aspect is any varsity athlete is um, able to be a part of it. 
And then inside the varsity club will be a smaller student athlete advisory committee that will be the kind of the, the inner workings of it to help provide leadership. There's a whole bunch of ideas, whole bunch of different avenues. One example would be a um, homecoming week, a spirit week. So we organize all of our varsity athletes and our teams, and we all attend a different event that week. So all the football players would go, everyone would attend the volleyball, or everyone would attend the swim meet, or everyone would go to cross country, everyone would go to the soccer games, and just provide a little school spirit um, that encompasses all of our athletic department, and not just specific events. The, um, you know, the other the other ideas are, are there, and the kids had some really good ones uh, about bringing in speakers about, you know, the negative effects of using drugs or vaping or at, on athletic performance, some things that are specific maybe to students, student athletes, and maybe we can focus in on some of those things a little bit. The other, the other um, reason for it and the other um, piece of it is that when things come up, we want to have student voice in there. We want, we want to acknowledge their thoughts and their ideas, and, and it's always um, beneficial to hear directly from those who are affected the most by our decisions. Any questions from the board? Okay. And I'm glad we got those. Uh, we got two candidates, and, and we'll hopefully hit the ground running and try to get something um, in front of the homecoming. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for your time. Uh, let's see. Next up is Mr. Haley. Um, he's going to give us a uh, update as far as where we are with some uh, issues revolving school safety. Do I got a clicker or do you do it? Like, look at Hi guys, again, thanks for the opportunity to present. Um, some of you guys have already seen part of this presentation, but sorry about that. So, um, so just some new things that uh, we have with our technology and some things that we're trying to do here at the school to make it a little safer. <clears throat> um, Gallagher is our the system that manages our card swipes, um, the panic alarms, and then the, the cameras are actually from the A-plus company, but they're, uh, what the heck's it called, Mark? Milestone. Uh, Milestone. Milestone. So um, we got new site maps for the panic alarms, doors and cameras, push button stations, um, panic alarms and the PAs. We've tested every single pull station panic alarm and all the PA systems and all the schools and everything is working 100% um, going into lockdown. Um, we numbered our exterior doors. Um, the high school in Seneca has got four fire drills complete. We did one over at Prospect today that went real well. We have one scheduled, another fire drill scheduled for tomorrow and then a lockdown scheduled for Thursday at Prospect. Um, just go over, I'll touch base on the, the new COVID-19 protocol um, and then some things that the security team has done over the summer. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is what I'm talking about. These are the site maps. Um, green means that everything is locked down and good. Red means that there's a door that's been open too long. You can get the next one. But if you um, from inside the system, the security guard or whoever that is managing this, they click on that door. It'll tell them the last person that um, exited through the door, the time that it happened. And it will bring up the closest cameras um, to that door so that we can check and see who left it open or who was in and out. Um, <clears throat> so these are this is a picture of our pull-down stations. Prior to this, all we had, we had uh, seven panic alarms um, throughout all three schools. Now all of the schools have this lockdown pull station um, right next to uh, wherever there's a fire alarm. It's pretty close. So yeah. just another yeah. picture there. Pretty much wherever there's a fire alarm pole station, there's a lockdown station. Um, new ways to go into lockdown. So we've always had the panic alarm. So now we've got the uh, pole stations. We can access it through um, our computer system. And we're, we just got uh, some new software that's going to allow us, allow any teacher, any person with a school device 
to put us into lockdown. Um, the PA alert in the old school. So what, um, before, prior to this, if we had wanted to go into a lockdown, somebody had to first recognize that there's a threat, then call down to someone in the office that was at a panic alarm button. They had to push the button, and then you'd have to make a, an alert, or you'd have to make an announcement over the loud, uh, PA system. Now, once that lockdown is pushed or a panic alarm button is pushed, it automatically comes over the PA system and says lockdown, 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 tells you to get to your rooms and all that good stuff. Um, this summer, we've, we've numbered all the exterior doors. Um, in the event of an emergency, it, it'll save valuable time. You can let whoever the first responder is know exactly where you're at. So the way it starts is the main entrance is door number one, goes in clockwise order. And right here, where a lot of you guys um, entered in through this east hallway, that's the last door number, door number 36. Um, the fire department, has actually put a few of these numbers in their um, GPS system um, so that they know exactly where certain boards are at. Um, camera system's about 98% complete. We've got uh, some new technology that's coming in. We've got some people that are coming down. They're gonna look and make sure that our coverage is what it needs to be um, for the new system that we're getting into. And we're, um, so we're about 98% complete. Okay, updated COVID guidance. So um, the CDC come out with all this first and then New York State and Cat County has adopted that. Um, so they eliminated the test to stay. Um, they removed the recommendation, or recommendation to pod or co cohort students. Um, they removed the recommendation to quarantine except for high risk setting areas. There's no more on-site testing for anyone. Uh, it was for unvaccinated last year. It's not the case this year. And then the CDC still recommends that people that have COVID-19 wear a well-fitting mask for 10 days. So if they'd be isolated for five days and then an additional five days when they return. Uh, what's the same with COVID-19? You know, students and staff, if you have symptoms, stay home. That's the easiest way to say that. Um, students and staff who test positive should isolate for five days. Day zero is the day you test positive or the onset of symptoms. And then day one would be your first day of isolation. Um, five day, once you're out for five days, you still have to wear a mask for an additional five days. We still provide the masks. We have thousands of home test kits for anybody that's looking for some. And then, uh, this is mainly for the employees in here. If you test positive, notify your principal and myself so that everybody's in the loop for staffing. All right. Um, and this is kind of what we're preaching to our new employees and our, well, new and old employees, not old, but experienced people that have been here. <laughs> um, a big, a big push for everybody to keep the doors closed and locked while um, students are there in class, while they're teaching instruction. That's the number one thing that we can do to keep the students safe. Um, no, have the teachers and the students know where the safe zone is in their, their room. Familiarize yourself with our emergency plans and take the drill seriously. I know we had uh, a fire drill today and one of the people that were reporting was having a difficult time because other employees who didn't have students in class were talking and it was making it difficult for them to report. So everyone, including the teachers and administration and staff, everybody needs to take the drill series. Um, shoot, I forgot my other visual aid. We're making a, it's BOCES has it right now. It's a flip chart, basically, that are, it's gonna go in every room. Um, the first, on the very first page, it tells how to use the new PA system so that if somebody, if a teacher needed to call um, a shelter in place, they can do it right from their, right from their telephone. Um, okay, we got it. Okay, what's up and coming? Um, armed security, um, active shooter training with emergency services. 
Um, so we had, uh, this summer we've been pretty busy. Um, we did the lifeguards had the lifeguards over at the pool um, had, we did a simulated drowning where the Sound Mega Fire Department, they had their EMSs there. Um, Dr. Beeler and myself were there. They threw a dummy in the pool and they had the, that was a, the simulation. They had to act like this was a, a real drowning. So they had to clear the pool. One person had to go in and get it up, get the dummy out on the deck and start doing CPR. So they did a pretty good job. And then they threw it in the deep end. And then <laughs> that was the real deal there. They really had to use teamwork. Um, but the big thing was, is that they got the experience of doing that and we're trying to build a, a relationship with our emergency services. We've had our fire department down here a couple different times now to help us with training. Um, we had an active shooter presentation by the Cattaraugus County um, training officer and Cat County Emergency Services uh, guy's name is Bobby Coon and Ken Rice. They come down and they basically they showed us how or what they would do in what order if there was an active shooter scenario. And we talked about how we could better um, utilize our, our safety security team in the event that we had one of those situations. And what we come up with was that the security team would be, whenever there's an active shooter type scenario, you can have a hot zone, a cold, or warm zone and a cold zone. Hot zone is where the shooters are at. The warm zone hasn't been cleared yet and cold is, everything is all good. So where the security team would, um, what they would do in this situation is they would do like combat medic stuff, applying tourniquets, get anyone that was seriously injured from that warm zone into a triage area where they could get worked on by emergency services. So we talked about that. Um, and sometime in October, we're going to have those same people back. We're going to have Cat County Emergency Services, um, the deputies, the SRT team from Cat County, um, and the fire department. We're going to put on we're going to get TECC training or TECC training, which is like stop the bleed, combat medics. And then we're going to put, we're going to do a simulated active shooter. This will probably be on a weekend that we do that. Um, all right, I think we got that. So, Cat County, all Cat County, the other thing that we've done is all the deputies who patrol in our zone have their own swipe cards. That was an issue that, um, or not an issue, but it was something that we discussed how we could better help them do their job. And, and that's one area that, you know, rather than have just the SROs being able to open doors in a, in a lockdown event, now any of the Cat County deputies that patrol in this zone and the SRT team has their own swipe cards for the school. Um, the SRT team is gonna be coming here um, sometime this month, just for uh, this camp, well, all campuses, just to get a lay of the land. Um, and then, okay, I already talked about the emergency service. Okay, I already talked about that. That's the active shooter one. But the SRT team, that's the special re response team. Um, we're just going to give them a, a tour of the building so that they know the facility if something ever happens and they're that far, that, that much more far ahead. All right. All right. I guess that's it. Any questions? Just a quick note. It's the frame around it where it, the bottom of the frame is, is rotted out. Um, maintenance has been here. I know it's getting replaced in the next project. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It's it didn't work for me either. Yeah. It's touchy. It's touchy. Yeah. Sensitive. You got a smile on. What that? You got a smile on. Yeah. Well, it, it'll turn green, but it, it just didn't unlatch. <clears throat> oh, the other thing I need to talk about is all of our security guards are going to be New York State licensed security guards. They, um, two weeks ago, two Fridays ago, we had a guy from SWAT, which is uh, security and security weapons and training. 
keep them down and give the eight hour initial training that the, our existing security guards need to become licensed. Um, so the next step in that process, they have to do a 16 hour on the job training. And then once they do that, um, they'll get their, their license and will be licensed security guards and just be an annual eight hour annual training to keep that security guard that they have. That's um, about it, I think. Did I miss anything? Thank you. No, I did Thanks, Rick. Okay, that concludes our presentation part. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Um, next is our, our, our public communication. Do you have anybody that wants to address the board? No one has signed that. Okay, anybody from Title Six? No. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, Okay, next on the agenda is our central office message. Is Karen on the Zoom? She's not. She's not on the Zoom? She is not. She is um, actually out of the state at a conference, okay. uh, and I believe she's back up at the moment. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, uh, next is our board message. That's with several clips. Sure. Um, I wrote a brief 16 page document. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've gotten to really enjoy this. Portion of it, we share what's inside of our head and what we're thinking. Hopefully, it motivates you. And uh, as you get to know me, every time I have an opportunity, I sort of come from a Padinishoni point of view. And uh, in a previous work experience, I was part of a team that developed a leadership paradigm program uh, to prepare our tribal members to take uh, executive positions, C suite positions, and our corporations. And one of the things that we, we looked at first was the word leadership. And we want to know just what does that mean? And in our traditional communities, our leaders are referred to as Oyane. And that in, in English pretty much means chiefs. But there's debate about that. And there's different in, uh, translations. One of them means those out front those who lead. And then another one means those with horns, because the chiefs wear horn ear antlers in their headdresses. And then the one that I really like, though, that <clears throat> I believe this one came from one of the, the Mohawks, but they said that it means those who put the people on the right path. And I just, I love that statement because it, it, it's so universal, it fits so many things. And <clears throat> that's how I look at all of them as your leaders, huge impact, your in influencers. But you as educators, you definitely do everything you can to put our students on the right path. And I think that's so fitting. Um, I commend you for your work and one word of Seneca, is uno nedane. And what I said to you is, um, it's actually interpret or translates to uh, many layers of things. But I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this week, I just uh, wanted to uh, welcome everybody back. Yeah, it's amazing how quick the summer flew, and now it's nice to see all the kids back into it. The uh, the joys of in the morning when you get used to summer and not getting stuck behind the bus, and all of a sudden you realize where they are and all that good stuff. But just wanted to uh, thank everybody for the new school year, and good luck to everybody, and that good stuff. Yeah, thanks. Great. I just want to welcome everyone back as well. I think I'm most excited about it is that you guys have a legitimate opportunity this year to fight against what the pandemic created and hopefully break the gap in education. And also, the, I want to express my appreciation for the military. I know I've got military appreciation at the end, but I will not be able to do that. Express my appreciation for that. Thank you. Sue? 
Well, it sounds like our school year is starting out well. Uh, thankfully, the teachers and the students have gotten together so far. So uh, good luck to all of you. And hopefully, we'll catch up on anything we lost. Thank you. I also want to uh, thank everybody for, for a great start to the school year. Um, I heard nothing but good things you know, from, from everybody I talked to in the community. Uh, I also want to say, apologize for having to wear a mask. I'm in day nine of my of my COVID pro protocol. So after tomorrow, I'll be, I'll, I'll be free and clear. Um, but I just want to say thanks. Thanks to everybody for a really great start. Um, superintendent message. Dr. Sure, uh, just a couple of things. Um, as we know, last week we welcomed back our students, um, and it's great that our buildings are now schools again. Our fields are now arenas for athletics. Our employees are now leaders, supporters, and teachers. And most importantly, the youth of our community are now students again. While the past week has been stressful and exhausting for our students and staff, I encourage everyone to reflect on the fact that if we didn't care so deeply for the success of our organization and our students, then we wouldn't be stressed and tired. And I wanna thank each of you for caring enough about our students and each other to be as stressed as you were. And as our students return, also to work hard enough to be exhausted at the end of the week. We will adapt to the conditions that cause stress and we will rise to the level of fatigue, but we must make sure that we never stop caring. Speaking of caring and doing a great job, I just wanted to ask Mr. Schieber to give us a brief update on two of your teachers. Absolutely, I'd be uh, happy to. Um, currently, we have uh, Brooke Canale and Brandy Kinney um, in Albany, um, meeting with the Board of Regents. Uh, they presented uh, both of them with the Louis E. Yavner Teaching Award, commemorating outstanding contributions in teaching about the Holocaust and other human rights violations. Um, just to speak a little bit about them, they left yesterday late after school. Um, drove all the way to Albany and they're on their way back now. So they only missed one day of school. So um, they're definitely dedicated to the school district, definitely dedicated to the students. And honestly, that was their biggest concern leaving there. You know, we're only a weekend, how can I lose the class? So just fantastic job and very happy for them. We will um, have a more formal presentation uh, on their recognition uh, at the next board meeting. Um, Mr. Bartosik, Mr. Early just mentioned military appreciation this weekend. Do you want to just give a quick update officially on what's happening? Well, Levi's also a little bit of a point person on that. Uh, the idea just came from a couple cool events last year. Last year we had Youth Night and we had Every Child Matters Night, and it was it, it was something that brought the community together, community and the school community together. So. Um, this year, we, extend, we expanded Military Appreciation Night. Some other districts throughout the country, you know, it had, it had come up with some pretty cool uh, presentations. Um, Levi, I don't know if I want to, how much I want to divulge, but just be there Friday night. Just be there Friday night. <laughs> yeah, there's right. just a couple niceties. It, it, it is, there, there's a, um, a few things that we're going to do to make sure that we recognize those who serve, um, you know, just, just appreciate you know, from from an athletic standpoint, it's not always connected, but there is some connection there, and it is the place where a lot of people come together. So, um, the following home game will be uh, homecoming, teacher appreciation, teacher appreciation night, and then the last game will be senior night and every child matters. So it's just an opportunity to uh, make the night a little special. And hopefully, get a win. <laughs> I also just wanted to acknowledge and um, thank uh, Dr. Hamill, Ms. Papa, Ms. Cook, and Mr. Musial um, on Friday. On Friday, uh, Seneca Intermediate was presented with a mumpum that was created by the students. Um, and we'll have that be presented to the board. Um, it was, honestly, the, the work was remarkable and the meaning behind the symbols that are in the wampum. Um, was completely student generated and really reflects well on the school itself, um, as well as the students that comprise the school. So it was a terrific uh, assembly 
and the product is really pretty powerful and something that I think everyone should have a chance to see. So I wanted to just thank those individuals who uh, participated in that. And then last but not least, um, it is Trustee Freeze's birthday today. Ooh. So we just wanted to acknowledge say happy birthday. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mark. Um, one person I neglected to um, recognize yeah. is Gary John. Gary, if if you have a a message to to uh, tell everybody, that would be super. I apologize oh, for, for scanning over you, but you know, out of out of sight, out of mind, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting here quietly, patiently waiting. Not a big deal. I thought I thought maybe you guys kicked me off or something. But um, oh, happy birthday, Sue! Oh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, real quick though, I just you know wanted to welcome everybody back. Uh, appreciate everybody coming back and welcoming all the children back to the building and starting to do what we do. Um, much appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I did want to mention though, uh, this past weekend, uh, my wife and I actually had a chance to go see something that was pretty cool. Um, we went to the Reg Line in Jamestown Saturday and we went and it was called An Evening with Jerry Brooks, Advocating for a Positive School Culture. Uh, he's an administrator out of Kentucky and he does, uh, uh, I guess the best thing to call it is a comedy act, but he, he, everything he relates to is back to the school setting, back to the school environment. Um, a lot of the jokes were teacher jokes and kind of went over my head, so I had to ask Mindy to explain them to me afterwards. But uh, he had a very positive message and I, it's, it's worthwhile to listen to some of his stuff and understand his message because he puts it in a different framework. Uh, I was actually really impressed. I had no idea what to expect, but I was pretty impressed with what he had to say. You know, he makes you laugh. He makes you think. Um, I even think he made a few people kind of shed a tear with some of the stuff he talked about. You know, he, he talks about caring for the students, caring for your, your fellow staff members, you know, creating a positive culture, a positive environment. Um, it was a really great show. Uh, if you get the chance to go see Jerry Brooks, I recommend it to everybody. It was, it was awesome. I'm glad she, I'm glad Mindy took me. So I just wanted to bring that up, mention that. Um, it was pretty cool to see. And I'm sure a lot of teachers and, you know, staff out there will probably know who the guy is and have watched his YouTube videos. But he does have a YouTube channel. Check it out. He's pretty funny, but he's real too. So, um, but with that, I just want to say, you know, I hope that's one of the things we're working towards, creating a positive environment, positive culture for all staff and students. So, yeah, way. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is the consent agenda. Um, everybody have a chance to read over the consent agenda. Oh, you need a motion to approve the consent agenda item? Motion. Motion by Second by Red. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Okay, under old business, you're, I don't see anything with it. Um, under new business, uh, uh, section A is the contract for the confirmation for the head staff services. Mark, John, go back with us. Sure. Uh, this is essentially sort of pass through the funding. Um, the Seneca Nation offers a head start program. Uh, if there are certain requirements that are uh, met, such as certified staff, number of days, they are eligible to receive funding. And as a local education agency, um, that funding essentially comes through us. Uh, we don't take any of it and we don't actually contribute any to it, um, but we do have it passed through our books. So because of that, we contract with them. Okay, great. Okay, okay. Uh, I need a motion to approve the agreement. Okay. Motion? Second. Okay. Two, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Uh, section B, standard work day and reporting resolution. Mark, can I go there real quick? Yes, uh, this is a civil service requirement. It, uh, when we add a new position, uh, specifically a new title, at the last board meeting, we added a project director uh, for Title VI. Once we do that, it, we are then required to identify the work hours, uh, essentially, and this is part of that process. So 
uh, that come with us. We do this several times throughout the year as new positions are created. But this is just another procedural recognition of that. Okay, great, thank you. You need a motion to approve the standard workday resolution? Motion. Second. Okay. Okay. Second by Cliff. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Okay, section C. Consultant? Gabriel Papa. Yes, Gabrielle works with our Native American curriculum team, um, or what we refer to as NACTI. She has been with us, this will be going on her third year. She has made very significant contributions, not only to the land acknowledgement statement, but also the ongoing curriculum development that that team puts through. Um, she was also one of the individuals uh, behind the Wampum creation um, and a whole host of activities that are going on uh, that are focused in our schools. Uh, she is a absolute tremendous asset to that team. Great, thank you. Okay, we need a motion to approve the consultant agreement. Motion. Second from there. Second by flip. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, section B, Apex Window Film. Uh, bid approval and, and this is the uh, security film, correct? For, for the windows? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to go over there real quick? Uh, yeah, we don't talk about it too much, but it's a um, film that's applied to many of the windows uh, just to impede um, and ensure they're not really open. Okay. And it goes over the existing glass. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay, we need a motion to approve this bid. I'll move. Motion by Sue. Okay. Second by foot. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Okay, uh, section E, a contract with eligible central school district. Uh, looks like a new student, correct? That yes. Um, Ellicottville is unable to provide services to this particular student, uh, which of course we can do here in Salamanca. So they have contracted with us um, for uh, to enable that to occur. Okay, sounds good. Um, we need a motion to approve the contract with Ellicottville Central. No. Motion by Ted. Second by Brad. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain, motion carried. Okay, section F is that MOU for student for donors step program. Yes, uh, step is a science and technology entry program. Uh, we have been working uh, for that program, typically referred to as step, has been in Salamanca schools for many, many years. Um, it allows students uh, who may not have um, the traditional predisposition to get into science and technology courses. Um, and we encourage those students to get involved and it really allows them to open up uh, some doors, uh, not just for additional education, but also for career. Uh, the grant is run through SUNY Fredonia, and this is our agreement with uh, SUNY Fredonia to once again continue that this year. Great, thanks. Okay, we need a motion to approve the MOU. If we don't, motion. Motion by Brad. Second. Second by Sue. Second by It's a toss up. <laughs> uh, any yeah, discussion? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. Okay. Item G uh, is a contract addendum. Uh, for lease of the West Gate for office space for the end. Yes, so uh, as many individuals know, uh, district office has moved, or portion of district office has moved to West Gate. We have recognized that that is a very convenient location for us to be housed. We currently also have some administrative staff that are still on site here, as well as in the Blue House uh, next to the bus garage. 
Um, we have decided that it makes more sense to lease the rest of the building, uh, Westgate, and centralize our district office staff there. So this uh, lease addendum allows us to lease the rest of the building. So uh, the gentlemen schools will now have the entire Westgate facility uh, with the exclusion of the Chamber of Commerce room uh, at the end. Okay, great, thank you. Changing motion to create a contract addendum. No, Motion to move motion. Two. Yeah. Second. 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 Dead. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Motion carries. Okay, item H, uh, the CSU memorandum of agreement. Can I go there real quick, Mark? Certainly. So, uh, about two meetings ago, we approved the uh, contract that was renegotiated with the CSU. I was on uh, civil service, actually, it's a consolidated service unit. Uh, in there, we did our best to ensure that we were consistent uh, across the board with various positions and titles, um, but also uh, with um, salaries. One of the oversights that when we went, went through and began to enact it is we, our goal was to have the uh, family support workers be an 11 month employee. Um, that would be the same with homeschool coordinators. Somewhere in the compilation of the agreement, we made them 12 month employees. The real goal was to have them be 11 month employees so that all individuals serving as family liaisons work the same schedule. Um, this provision or memorandum of agreement allowed that to happen. So now all family liaisons, which include homeschool coordinators and family support workers, will be on an 11 month schedule. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, we need a motion to approve the CSU MOA. Motion. Motion by Brad. Second. Second by Flip. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. Okay, that's it for the new business. Um, we are moving on to personnel consent agenda. Um, what we have is a list of some new and some new classified folks. That's correct. Uh, let's see. We have uh, an individual, Amanda, who is receiving tenure tonight. She has a permanent appointment for Matt Quigley. We have some new additions to our family, Jared Fish, Danielle Sevens, and Lauren Johnson. Uh, and then we have a revision to the start date for Mr. Coletta uh, from August 24th to October 3rd. Uh, and then there's some other um, volunteer positions that have been filled by some of our staff as volunteers, our varsity club advisors, Keith Jones and Christian Furlongs and Mr. Rattosi spoke to previously, and some of our additional co-curricular and athletic positions are being filled as well. Okay, great. Do we need a motion to approve the personnel action items? Motion. Second. What? Second by my grant. Any discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Wait a minute. She had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. We have to have a motion and the second first. Okay. We have a motion by. Well, you're going to be introducing, right? Yeah. We're going to do this first. Yep. Yeah. Motion by Brad or motion by Flip. Second by Brad. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Did Kerry say aye? Kerry, aye. Kerry said aye. Perfect, thanks. Okay, now, now we can introduce our Sorry. All right, Mrs. Beaver. Is there, is there any chance you have something to say? Well, you like pointed. I thought I missed something. Oh my gosh, I think we go over the side. Entirely. I was going to speak on Amanda Urbanski. Um, she's a kindergarten teacher at Prospect Elementary. Amanda is kind, energetic. She has a genuine love for her students. She always has a warm smile and takes a positive approach to her day. Amanda is very passionate about laying a strong foundation so her kiddos can have a successful journey throughout their education. Amanda brings creativity, passion, and patience to her classroom. 
Her innovative ideas keep her students engaged and learning. Amanda is an excellent team player and her insights and experiences are valued greatly. Amanda Urbanski embraces all the qualities we look for in a warrior and we are proud to have her at our district. Congratulations. Thank you. Do we have any, any other recognition then? I don't believe we have. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the next item are, are some uh, um, board information and reports. Uh, the first is the enrollment uh, report. Uh, we have a first reading of a board policy concerning board of education uh, nomination and election. And also a first reading of the appointment of retired persons. Uh, also have a list of upcoming events. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but they're there in the agenda if you want to read them. Um, we need a motion to adjourn the meeting. No. Motion by Brad. Second. Second by Sue. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Thank you very much for everybody. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.